Mm -hmm. I'm having Hangout control fail today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I forgot to mute myself, and you may have heard me either talking or humming to myself earlier. So sorry, viewers. Ah, new intro. <laughs> new intro. Nicole talking to herself. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Learning Space. I am uh, one of your hosts, Nicole Gallucci, postdoc with the Cosmo Quest Citizen Science Project. And I have with me my co-host, Georgia Bracey. Hello. And in-house, we have our special guest today, Jess Krim. Hello. Hi. So uh, we are currently broadcasting on YouTube and Google+, so you can comment on the YouTube page. Doesn't always update well for me, but uh, go ahead and give it a try, and uh, I will try and follow the comments there. I will also be following the comments on the event pages, <laughs> the two of them. Uh, and uh, also suggest using the Q&A app if you are watching. We've already got a couple people. We have a Danica, we have Michael, and we have Nancy all saying hello. Hey so uh, <laughs> feel free to comment, ask questions during the broadcast. We will try and get you from all of those um, locations. Um, so I, uh, whatchamacallit? Okay, apparently all they, were, they, all they heard was typing and clicking, so that's, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Guido. <laughs> um, so I do not have a special activity of the week because this, the main topic is a really cool activity, which I've been teasing on, on the social medias as there are cupcakes. Mm -hmm. And we're really sorry that um, Hangouts hasn't uh, included a share cupcake tool. So <laughs> we cannot physically share cupcakes with you through the internet, yeah. which is very Or a bad. smell feature. Or, or smell. Oh my god, this is it killing me. Weird. It is sitting here and I can't touch it. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to hear, uh, so I have not seen this demo, this, this uh, activity yet, so I'm excited. And uh, Jess is going to take us through this activity, uh, which is uh, Cupcake Geology. And I will share with you guys a PDF, a link to the PDF um, in a little bit in the comment section. So uh, Jess, do you want to, uh, I don't know if you want to give the background of the activity first, or if you just want to go through it with us. Uh, as if we were your students. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you can tell us a little about yourself too, because she does do this yes. with students. So, um, yeah, give a little okay. intro. All to. right, so I work in the curriculum and instruction department, and I've taught uh, science methods to elementary students, which is this is one of their favorite activities. And I've revised it a little bit uh, for middle school, and then we can kind of talk about the different uh, ways it can be extended. Uh, but basically, it involves cupcakes, <laughs> and I'll hold it up at each step. But you'll see that the cupcake is brown on the top, and then it's covered with a silver foil wrapper. And that's that way because you're not supposed to be able to see what's underneath the, the wrapper or underneath the icing, which is brown to represent soil. So basically, uh, students would make observations about the cupcake as if it were the earth, and they wouldn't be able to touch it or cut into it or, or eat it, goodness, uh, and they were given these highly technical tools by which they can sample the cupcake to... We have a science. <laughs> So they can uh, sample the cupcake and see what is under the so or under the soil. So first, they would want to plan. You know, hypothesize. Okay, should we go straight down? Should we go at an angle? What's going to give us the best reading on what's underneath the soil? Uh, so. If we were to do this activity, I mean, we could go ahead and yeah. do this. Do you usually do this with groups, or uh, is it? I can think go you know different it, ways. You know, groups of three at the most, because then they get angry over who gets to split <laughs> the cupcakes, how many ways to split the cupcakes. Cupcakes are not that big. Yeah, uh -huh. but you can teach fractions. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> then we could extend it into math. Mine and yours. Exactly. That's the so they have usually uh, they get. Um, three or four straws, and um, one year they used both sides of the straws to sample, because it only goes oh, up so far. Both you ends, see. okay. So, so it's up to you. You can take four cores or eight cores mm -hmm. in whatever pattern you want, and you should probably diagram it 
you know, if you're a student, you could diagram where you're searching for. So you want to go ahead okay. and... Okay. All right. So sample. I'm going to do one just kind of... <laughs> I have to go right in the center, straight down. So, so we're assuming this is a huge chunk of earth that we can't yeah, just earth. unwrap and Drilling cut open. Into the earth. Drilling straight down as far as we can with right. our horror. And, then okay. and, and not eat it. <laughs> and then we're just going to... So I have no idea what's in this cupcake, guys. This is science for me. This wow! Is... That's so much fun. So right, you hold up the camera. Uh, yes. At this point, Slide okay. Down. So here... I decided to go in an angle. Mm, okay. All right. So Wait, I should be keeping track of. I should be sciencing properly by keeping track of this. Aren't you writing it down? Where's your journal? I don't know. Do we need to use this? <laughs> yes, you can use that. Okay. Okay. So this is in the PDF I'll share. This is this sheet. And on the side of that, you can draw your cores and, and color them. Um, you want to remember the law of superposition. So the mm -hmm. older layers are on the bottom, younger layers are on the top. Okay. So, so I could draw. I would draw and this, and I'll kind of kind of show and describe. Ooh, ooh, I have ooh, of course have a lovely thing. brown on top. Look oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Sort of a purplish layer, which oh, is the largest it. layer, and then yeah. yellow, I have and a little purple. sort of pink layer, and then a blue layer. And it's covered in chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. So we're sketching, my... doing a quick yes. sketch of our core sample. Right. Oh, my God. And you could talk about uh, the cupcake so is about an inch and a half high, and the core is maybe only half an inch. So you can talk about the layers being compressed through pressure, and then in real life it would be temperature, although there's no temperature change in our cupcake. Okay. And then you can kind of see that the layers are not, they do not go straight across. There's mm -hmm. this little bit of a slant mm -hmm. to some of them, which is very interesting. Okay, so... Okay, so yes, yeah, so I'm drawing... Yeah, I have like this little purple blob. Oh, all the details in. I have a purple blob that doesn't go all the way around. Mm. So I'm trying to draw that, so I'm making a diagram. Is this, is this teacher, is this right? <laughs> yes, yes, good, very good. Okay. Nice labeling. All right. And we didn't give you any colored pencils. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I don't have them in my, if I had colored pencils in my desk, I would but do I'm that properly. I'm using all purple, so I'm not really doing it right okay. either. <laughs> That's why I'm labeling. We'll label. Um, I'm going to take a second sample. Okay, so now I gotta do it again. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can turn your core over, or you can get yeah. a fresh one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Either way, well. The oh, show is gonna end with me sucking chocolate out of these straws. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kind of go. Warn our viewers. All here. All right, now I'm gonna do straight down because I didn't do that before. Wow. Oops. <laughs> ah, I went through the center of the earth. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, it's so different. This, yeah. All right. So this time I got a nice pink layer that does not go all the way across. Mm -hmm. I have some pink and a little bit of blue. So I have some pink crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> this is not in focus. And <laughs> the, earth is, the earth is crummy in part. All right. Or anything. It's that the earth is crummy. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, so you action? just have to. I know. How can you not eat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being very, very good, very and I'm not eating anything. So this is one of those classroom activities where you can eat the science. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of the things uh, your students might find different, uh, so they could either go straight down to do the sample or at an angle, mm -hmm. but the technique they use to core the earth could be different. You know, some students I've had... Uh, spiral their straw as they put it in. Mm. Uh, other students suck up in the straw to try and make the layers thicker and not right. as compressed. Does, does that work? work? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so it works, it a, works little a little bit, bit, but it's really hard to suck up a cupcake through a straw. <laughs> oh. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have each student do their own drawing, and or do you assign I think uh, that roles? Yeah. It really groups. Nancy it's Nancy Graziano wants to know who's bringing the cupcakes to Geek Girl Con next year. <laughs> I don't know if we can make several hundred cupcakes. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> all the kids that we got. But I did do an edible astronomy paddle. Yeah. Journey to the center of the cupcake. <laughs> Thank you, Guido. Alright, alright. Um, stop drifting off. I need to do work. <laughs> Get back on task. I wonder I if... Sometimes you could have one student be oh, like the recorder yes. or Dewey the drawing and well, another student do the coring. The, but. Yes, and it really depends upon the age. You uh-huh. know, like if they can handle the cupcake then, you know, they could maybe have one person do the drawing, or if you want to have them practice their observations in detail, then you would want to have all of them do the drawings. Great. It's more different again. Lesson in details and observation (coughs) and recording already, all those good things. So one of the things that we haven't talked about yet that you could talk about with your students is the, where you're, where you've taken the core samples, and what you're seeing in the results. So for example, if you're seeing yellow in one area and not in another, what could that mean for the layers mm-hmm. and how they're distributed within the Earth? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm confused because I totally put this in at an angle mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're all straight, which means the oh. <laughs> So maybe that means that the layers inside are angled. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do one more straight straight down on the edge. All right, I'm going to do that too. Do, do it in between my others. Nicole, do yeah. you have any yellow in yours? I haven't hit any. You neither have I, but Georgia has yellow. I have yellow. I have a lot of she struck My gold. first core in the middle was a lot of yellow. Oh, this is this is a, this is great. We have a comment from Adley Metterick. I can't wait to do this with my seven-year-old son. I might have to insist his teacher watches this video. That's fantastic. This is exactly what we want to hear. We want you to share, and we will share the PDF. I can... And send us pictures. Yeah, so, there you go. So just pictures. Core samples. We'll They're talk cool. and we'll talk some more about how to set this up. After we're done, we're explo- I'm like serious about yeah, this. Yeah, so there's a whole, it's not hard to make this, right? We'll talk yep. about that, yep. and you don't obviously tell your students how you set this up before you have them do it, right? That's so true, that's true. A little bit of secrecy there, yes. but hey. Yeah. So yeah. you could, you know, if you had one student, say Georgia was the student that had the yellow, everybody's going to get jealous because they don't have yellow. I'm, I'm a little jealous right now. I don't have any yellow. And so that could be oh, sparking that. a discussion of a layer that Special gets pinched out. Mm-hmm. You know, like some layers that come in and they're not evident in all the track columns. Okay. No yellow, Nicole. I'm still not getting yellow. Yeah, yeah me neither. So as the groups are doing this, you probably have students like holding up their core sample and, mm-hmm. you know, look what I got. So the interplay, I guess, between the groups is got to be pretty interesting. Yeah. And then within the group itself, there's probably some argument about what's yes. going on. Yes, now out. I have to map, because I'm losing track, I have to, like, map mm-hmm. my it, from the top of the cupcake, which one's which. Yeah, there's probably a lot of arguments within the group about where to core yeah. and how to go about mm-hmm. it, especially if you tell them they can only take four, or if oh, you only sure. give them maybe two straws and they have to yes. use both sides. So then the next part of this once you have four cores, is to predict what you think your cupcake looks like. And <sighs> on the other side of this page, um, oh, all right, this is gonna be the hard part. part. Let's see. Maybe I'll just one. have a blank. Oh, okay. So on this document, you've got a grid, so you mm-hmm. can okay. uh, draw what you think the cupcake looks like based upon your cores. And the location of where your four is. Okay, are. actually, so this is the here. most intense part. Okay. Uh, when students do this, because it takes a while to think about where did I take the cores and what does that mean as far as the cross section. Yes. So this is a cross section, mm-hmm. right? And we're measuring so, in centimeters. I think I did it wrong. <laughs> I don't have rulers. <laughs> Yes, and I don't. Oh, 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 I have a ruler. Okay, I made a smiley face. I have a ruler. I didn't do them all in the same plane. Was that it's wrong? a happy face. It's a happy face. Ah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh my God. It's a constellation. Mine but I have to decide what, where I'm going to cut it. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. And then that, and then draw that. Yes. Shit. Okay. Right. So. Good. Uh, 
if you have three in a line, you could go along that line. That's yes, so I actually yeah, I think so do. that now. Mm -hmm. So do you tell them that in advance, or do you just say at this point, pick like three mm -hmm. that you can sort of line up yeah, really to imagine upon, your cross section? It depends upon their level of okay. understanding and yeah. tolerance for injury and ambiguity. Mm. Because if they need more direction, then you can provide them. Um, I'm sciencing right here. <laughs> it's great. Okay. All right, so the cupcake's about five centimeters. I know. Or six. How tall is my cupcake? How tall is my cupcake? Is it? <laughs> yeah, about five. I hope you guys are enjoying that's us. Power of estimation here. Do with science. Centimeters. Right, so that's the top. And then and they went through. Diameter. Diameter. Cupcake diameter. Oh. Seven, at least at the top, near the top. Six-ish. Hmm. It's a bit small on this grid. <laughs> All right. And then I made one. The I know this is so exciting for you guys. Oh, no, the diameter of the base <laughs> of the cupcake. We've got cupcakes. Come on. Five. Oh, see, I don't, oh, I don't know what orientation it went in. <sighs> Who was supposed to be recording that information? I, mi I, oh, I missed the orientation. Because I don't know where the purple... Oh, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. All right. So see, there's a fail in my data collection. Wow. So this is really hard. So do students um, get frustrated at this point at all or yeah they could <laughs> again you know, depending on the age yeah. That, yeah and and if they I mean if your students are used to doing inquiry activities then they're they're going to get less frustrated I think but if they yeah, so what are the basic I'm just gonna give you a quiz here <laughs> basic differences between an inquiry based activity and maybe a more traditional like what hopefully what are your students maybe kind of used to well, I would hope yeah. that they're used to at least structured inquiry. Um, so you could have, you know, cookbook activity is mm -hmm. where the instructions are do this step and then do that step. Yeah. You know, for example, that's kind of what I was doing with you. Okay, first we're going to do this step and then that yep. step. Um, you know, if you were doing something that is less structured, you could just give them the cupcake and say, you can't eat it, you mm -hmm. can't open it you figure it out. That's going to cause a lot of frustration, I think. Okay. But yeah. also it's just remember, too open, right? We yeah. are way more detail oriented, I think, than some students in how we're performing this. <laughs> and yet I we're still messed up the orientation. Kind of go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And and I think it's a valuable lesson to learn about the scientific process itself is that you can take all your data and then get to the analysis step and realize, "Oh man, I should have done X." Right. And so you have a weakness in your analysis because of that. Mm -hmm. Like I had to make an estimate of my orientation. Right. I don't know. Oh, yes, this would be okay, much prettier with colored pencils. Blue layer mm -hmm. at the bottom. <laughs> but I think there's blue at the bottom, there's pink, and then there's a purple inclusion. Okay, so I have a lot of yellow in the middle. Is inclusion a, a geology word? You could, yeah, I think so. <laughs> It's been, really it's been a long time. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I've taken a geology class. And then, okay, and what? And I've got some pink mm. over here. Mm. Tasty. Let me check the comments. Uh, okay. So we're going through a lot of processes, which is great, and a lot of skills. Um, uh, Nancy Graziano wants to know: Have you considered doing this with a cupcake filled with pudding? Oh. Like um. Like lava. I don't know if that would hold. Uh, I have not. Uh, I, don't, I mean, you could certainly suck it up into the straw easier mm -hmm. right, than the cupcake. If you were um, lucky enough to hit that pool with yes. your core. Yeah. One thing I've thought about is putting maybe like little chocolate chips in there. Mm. And actually, yeah. Dr. Marlette came up with this idea that you could uh, charge students for straws in the story that 
here's your tools and you have limited resources and mm -hmm. limited funds and how are you going mm -hmm. to design a way to get to the oh, optimizing. Dirt, which mm -hmm. would be the chocolate chip cookie. Great. So that's more chips. of a yeah, design project, mm -hmm. which would be fun. Yeah, there are other activities that are kind of mining, various versions of mining mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. where you try to get out a chocolate chip with certain tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lots of good variations. Hmm. So I really want to slice open All my right. cupcake at this point. I don't know if I'm ready? quite ready. We can do the reveal. All right. Um, add a little color to my diagram here, just to make it. I don't have any color. I have labels. <laughs> my diagram will be better. Mine looks like this. So again, uh, the PDF with the instructions on how this activity is done in the classroom, along with this worksheet that I keep waving proudly, <laughs> is uh, the PDF. I put the link. It's a uh, in my public Dropbox, I put a link um, on the event pages and as I comment on the YouTube stream. So you guys should be able to download the PDF from there and take a look at it while we continue. And I'm going to cut into my cupcake. So now now we've done the core samples. Now we're imagining a road cut, right, into mm -hmm. the side yeah. of a mountain or whatever. Because that's when you get to see actually them. see the layers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be so wrong. It's going to be hilarious. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got, oh, you have a syncline in yours. <laughs> that is fantastic. Ooh. All right, so here's um, crumbs. Ooh, look at that. All right, here's the, oh, it's beautiful. Here's my cross section. Oh, I didn't peel and it. So Jess just threw out a great term. What's a syncline? That Jess? is when the layers uh, that were originally horizontal got metamorphosed and they sink down, so it's a syncline. The reverse of that would be the anticline, and when the rock layers get pushed, that's one result. Okay. Would you like to eat it? This is amazing. So the first <laughs> okay, thing I, I noticed apparently... is that my, you know, I thought I had this little blue layer at the bottom, and actually, according to where I cut it, like blue is like the biggest part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. So, all right. It's mine. Oh, it's back. crumbling apart. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also it's, so there. So it's not. It's. I think it's the. Is it a syncline also? Because it's kind of down. Mm -hmm. kind of blue. But I was. So I was. I was almost right with the purple thing being there, except it goes across the whole top of the cupcake, and I didn't get that because uh, I missed it somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> but that was pretty close. Blue on the bottom, pink, and then the purple just kind of sinks itself in there. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Swir oh my God. So Give then you must that. give your students time yeah, to eat. Then they get to eat. <laughs> Yay. All right. So um, let's talk about uh, looking. So remember, you guys can ask us any questions or leave any comments on the Q and A app or on the event pages or probably on YouTube. Uh, sounds like we've already got one person sold on wanting to do this activity with their kid and showing it to their teacher, so yay. Um, can you give us a little bit of um, instruction on how you how you make these cupcakes in the first place? Yes, absolutely. Basically, you get white food or white cake, you know, just the regular white cake, and you mix it up like usual and separate it into four containers and color them with pretty colors. I think we have a picture of me mixing the colors in. I don't know if we could pan to that. Uh, I'm showing it on my screen. Is this the one? Hey, yes. there it is. OK. So uh, you basically just mix the colors into whatever vibrancy you want, and then layer them in the cupcake pans. Um, there's another photo that has a bunch of cupcakes in the pan, and it's as I am, um, yes, there it is. Uh, so I layered blue on the bottom of all of them. Mm -hmm. And then the ones in the middle, you'll see I did the, the red and then the green and then the purple. But the ones on the outside only had blue, red, and purple. OK. <clears throat> so, so when you compare the whole class, yes, can you put it back at you? Mm -hmm. Or say where each one came from in the pan? Yes, and okay. how to do that, you could even put numbers at the bottom of the pan so that when they pull them out, they can see where they're located. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is something that you can refer back to because if they are taken from a certain area, you know, uh, uh, you know how mm -hmm. we know 
what plates moved where is by the rock layers. So you could relate this back to, um, you know, what um, you could even mix those up, and then you could ask students what what order do they go in based upon what layers are similar? You know, what cupcakes or what continents were originally part of the same landmass? So, for example, you could have that be the original landmass of uh, they had the green in there. So that could kind of relate back to you know where we find the shells and the fossils and the rock layers, and we can tell what continents were next to each other. Okay. Awesome. So it's just white cake mix with food coloring. Yep, that's it. The layers. Awesome, awesome. That's excellent. Um, have you run in? I, I, now, do you do this with the education majors here? Uh, I have in the past. Right now, I'm, I'm teaching the secondary students, so I don't get to do it a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's one of my favorite activities. Do you have suggestions? Because uh, I, I know I can imagine teachers having dietary restrictions um, to worry about with their students. One group of teachers that I showed this to, they were super excited and they wanted to do it with their students and they were student teaching. They made the cupcakes and then they brought them in and they were told by the school that it wasn't in a package so right. they couldn't use it in the school. Uh, so that was disappointing mm. for them. But I think that if you're a teacher and you're wanting to do this, you could, you know, find out what dietary restrictions your students have, okay. allergies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, food coloring, they, if they're allergic to food coloring, they certainly wouldn't want to eat this like yeah. that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, okay, another option. Any other recipes or ways to make these no. at all? I don't know. Someone yeah. will have to experiment with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's open for many different <laughs> ways of doing it. Hmm. That's one of the things I like best about this because, you know, it's an activity that can be adapted many different ways. Uh, as I was going through the lesson plan for this, I was putting different uh, next-gen standards in there, cross-cutting mm -hmm. concepts, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. It, I mean, the cupcake's great. It's special, right? Mm -hmm. But it really matters what you do with it, you know, and what you, what you decide to focus focus on. And something like this is adaptable to pretty much anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nancy Graziano... Uh, also suggested if doing a big group activity, having a, a sheet cake, oh, having them all go through a sheet cake is one big activity. That is fantastic. That might make yeah, it that more sheet cake. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, oh, the link I put um, may not work for some people because I put HTTPS, so I'll copy that. Um, so if you're having trouble uh, getting the PDF. Let us know in the comments. I'll try the other link. Um, awesome. So can you tell us, uh, so we've, we've talked about the NGSS, um, the different standards here before. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what standards this covers and how this fits into the classroom? Yes, yes. So I was looking through them, and, and the ones that I think most immediately come to mind with the Next Gen standards are the middle school. There's one that's History of the Planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And there's two bullets under that, but the one that talks about the geologic time scale being interpreted from rock strata, it's, it's not an absolute scale, it's a relative scale, so you would figure out, you know, what layers are older than mm -hmm. what other layers. And then the other uh, core idea would be the plate tectonics and the large scale system interactions. So what I was saying about uh, the middle cupcakes only had the green in them, so then you could talk to students about figure out where they where they were originally. And cross cutting concepts, um, there's systems and system models. Of course, this is a model of the Earth. There's patterns, you know, predictable patterns that students mm. would see, and the scale, proportion, and quantity. Uh, you could talk about, um, you could actually then turn this into, okay, if this is your model of the Earth and it's an inch and a half high, you know, what does that mean? For, oh, actually, you could take the compression from the cupcake to the core and you could figure out the ratio of, you know, the compression rate. Mm -hmm. So you could kind of compare that to soil being compressed into rock layers. Um, and then with science and engineering practices, you've got asking questions, um, using models again, 
analyzing, interpreting data, planning and carrying out investigations. I mean, this is this is why I like it so much because it reaches so many different science and engineering practices. Um, you can have students engage in an argument from evidence. You know, you could ask them, you know, if green was an oil, a layer that had oil in it, should we drill for it? Where should we drill for it? And you can get into the ethical mm -hmm. conversation about do we even drill? Yeah. Um, you could have students, you know, do a presentation of what their group found and then mm -hmm. they could come back together mm -hmm. again and, um, you know, discuss the results from all the groups and try and come to a conclusion. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of possibilities. Of so, so you mentioned, you know, the ethical aspects and, you know, should we drill or not drill? I could see that coming together kind of with the sheet cake idea. Mm -hmm. So you could have some land features and maybe in one corner, you know, you've got some people living over here and then you've got a river or a stream over here and there's a mountain. Um, make a whole landscape cake. A little farm animal. Right, if you yes. <laughs> really get into it, make a landscape cake and then... And then, you know, but, you know, there's some core samples and some, you know, possible minerals and, and oil mm -hmm. and things underneath the surface. And so, yeah, where do you mine? Where do you drill? And what are the ethical implications of that? And then if you decide to go ahead, then who do you have to convince um, yes. to let you, you know, go ahead and drill? And so you could just go totally nuts and take yes. this to the limit. It's really fun. I'm imagining like awesome. little army men all over it. <laughs> <Get your action laughs> like, little out. monopoly <laughs> houses. <laughs> so that would be that'd be amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you do have them kind of come together and do a presentation, you usually can, at the end, yeah, or share a, at least kind of share out what the groups. Yes, are. and yeah. you know you could make this last for days. <laughs> um, you know it just depends upon what you want to focus on. Five and days what you of cupcakes. Do. Yes. Yeah, five days of cupcakes. <laughs> Monday, cupcakes. Tuesday, cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, sheet cake. Thursday. <laughs> yes. Um, the other thing that this really uh, allows students to do is, at a more basic or elementary level, is to practice the nature of science and those ideas. You know, making observations, hypothesis, you know, understanding that um, uh, you, you analyze data for a, in the nature of science and mm -hmm. just, you know, basic mm -hmm. practices like that. So Yeah, and you've got, um, like, your cover sheet here is a scientific dispositions also, mm -hmm. which I think are somewhat related to the, mm -hmm. the nature of science and the practices, but maybe are a little different. So mm -hmm. if you want to kind of share oh, a few of those, because people don't always think about that, I don't think. Right. Right, so, you know, the dispositions or values is what students find important and what, what they value uh, or what we want them to value as science students. So, you know, at, at the elementary level, a disposition could be uh, valuing others' opinions, you know, and just mm -hmm. basically being nice to each other in a group and <laughs> working as a team. You could give different mm -hmm. people a, a, a job to do. You know, you could have the person who uh, takes the core sample. You could have the person who cuts the cross section. You could be the note. You could have the note taker. You know, assign jobs within the group. Um, you could have the illustrator. Uh, you could also let's see other dispositions. Valuing group work as a way to solve problems. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're middle school or elementary school, you're you're that's the skill you need. Um, also, a gained appreciation for exploring the Earth's layers. Mm -hmm. You know. Like people, uh, when I talk to them about, or well, students, sometimes you talk to them about rocks. Rocks <laughs> are stupid, you know, and <laughs> this is a good way for them to understand. You know, this could actually even be an introductory lesson to uh, real data, or, well, more, more, uh, when I say real data, I mean, uh, you know, photographs of road cuts or actual mm -hmm. rock samples rather than cupcakes modeling um, what you're trying to get them to do. If you introduce an activity like this, whether it's middle school or high school, mm -hmm. that at least gets them engaged, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't want them eating the rock samples, <laughs> but if they could think about the cupcake and what it was like when they explored, and you know, it could be an activity that really gets them engaged and carries them throughout a unit. Yeah, absolutely. You can keep making connections back to that, that first, you know, activity that introduced mm -hmm. them to the concept, and, and it'll, it'll carry that idea, you know, those ideas through. Mm -hmm. 
I have a question. Being a fairly recent transplant to this area, do do students have a lot of road cuts in southern Illinois that they could see this? Because I compared in my mind to the Delaware <laughs> Water Gap in Pennsylvania, which is a huge, gorgeous road cut. Do they even have, uh, is there something nearby? Well, when I drive it not? to St. Louis, there are small road cuts, and okay. when you get into southern Missouri, there are some larger road cuts. I think that they would know at least what they are, and okay. would not maybe have the appreciation for the larger, like, insane road cuts that you can see in some places. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's some that are probably more the very, very south part of the state. Um, it's just so darn flat in the <laughs> in the central part. Right. Um, and northwest, um, <laughs> where the glacier didn't get get it. Um, but <laughs> it's more, it is in Missouri even, just mm -hmm. you know, a short ways away, it's much more impressive. And then um, I'm thinking of like uh, Kentucky and Oh, there's other places where, yeah, it's really just incredibly impressive, the layering you see in the road cuts. So, mm -hmm. um, so other places maybe a little more um, prevalent than, than Illinois. Mm -hmm. But So what else do we have? Let's see. I was going to ask. Uh, we have a, a, a comment from, from Nancy okay. uh, about... Uh, um, uh, can you use, uh, can you also, or have you used, or could you use uh, sand art as another way of demonstrating uh, either this core sample process or the idea of the layers of rocks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting idea. Yes, absolutely. Um, I recently did an ice core activity, which is similar to this. Mm -hmm. I did the ice core activity for the Science Olympiad, and as a precursor to that, we had sand core columns. Okay. So that they could kind of look mm -hmm. at that. So it works. It's great. Absolutely. It's a great idea. Okay. And then you have this kind of set up on the sheet um, using the five E's, which we were talking yes. about a little bit before the show. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one way to sort of um, kind of organize this lesson. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one, if you're familiar with our like Terra Luna and our Investigate CosmoQuest units, we use the five E's. Also, but it's not the way it has to be done necessarily mm -hmm. at all. So um, maybe you could talk a little bit about how you could, they could take this 5E structure and just sort of adapt mm -hmm. it to, you know, your own particular classroom and your own particular teaching style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think the the good thing about the 5E is that it gives you so many different uh, ways to go. I mean, if you think about the way you can expand the activity or extend the activity, it gives you a lot of different choices as well as reminding you to engage the mm -hmm. students somehow rather than not just starting off by, well, I, I guess if you gave them a cupcake, that would be pretty engaging. <laughs> but and it's, it's done. There you go. Right. You know, so in this one on the lesson plan, it talks about you know, asking preliminary questions. And I would ask these questions way before I got the cupcakes mm -hmm. out. I would mm -hmm. even keep them covered and in a drawer <laughs> or covered somewhere because they can smell them. The smell, yeah, tight container. Also very <laughs> engaging. Exactly. Yeah, so the first E is engage, mm -hmm. and it's all about getting the student Engaged. their attention yes. and um, their focus and activating mm -hmm. any knowledge, which they all have some sort of knowledge um, about the topic from their own experience. So getting all that kind of um, ready to go. Yeah. Right, like yeah. a pre, and you could use it as a pre-assessment, you know. Um, and then mm -hmm. the exploring part is when they actually get the cupcake and mm -hmm. look at it and speculate about what's in it, you know, talk about how they're going to make the core samples, uh, if they're going to go straight or diagonal. And the next part, explain, is actually when they get to cut it in, cut it in half. So then they are, you know, able to understand, or you're explaining to them, but actually they're kind of explaining to themselves. Mm -hmm. And then that gets mm -hmm. us to the last two elaborate. Yeah. yeah. So elaborate. the elaborate. I, I put several ideas. I went through this today, and the first one, discuss how heat and pressure can make rocks that are originally horizontal, bend and mm -hmm. fold, you know, into a syncline or anticline, which, by the way, I didn't really layer them in a syncline or anticline. That's the oven, you know, so the, 
if you layer them flat, the oven just kind of does its own magic. <laughs> and I think, you know, the convection of it makes the bottom layer kind of squeeze up along the sides. Yeah. Um, so it's and that was amazing to me, I know because I've seen parts of this activity before, and I've seen people cut the cupcakes open, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it's so artistic almost. It's just mm -hmm. beautiful what you see, and it's all curvy, and I just thought, how in the world do you make the cupcake it's do hard. that? Sorry, it's let the heat of the center of the earth do it for you. You don't have to worry about it. It just does it. So just bake mm -hmm. the cupcake and don't worry about it. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can even play with it and maybe put color on one side and not the others. Maybe do half and half um, <laughs> and see what happens there. Um, you could also, I have planned cupcakes that will tell a story. Uh, like we talked about, the middle layer or the middle cupcakes had the green in them. Mm -hmm. um, have students make evidence-based arguments about what, comp what continents or cupcakes we're part of the same land mass. You know, I just, I really, I, I think it's great because it attracts students because it's chocolatey and good, but also there's just so many different things you could do with this. Um, and like I said before, communicating their findings, like a, presenting a lab report. Um, yeah, there's there's mm -hmm. just a lot. A lot yeah, that you it's fun. So it. you can just get really creative. Yes. Very creative. And then so. the other ideas that we came up with was the sheet cake with the. Mm, I, I mean that. I think that is I really. I want to try that idea. now. Yeah. 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 I mean you. Could, I mean that would be like four four different <laughs> points on elaborate, and then you could have <laughs> students. Um, not just you could. I, on here it says they write down what they learned about the Earth from this process, but you could also get into there with self assessment. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, yeah. yeah, Nicole mm -hmm. said something about this in the beginning where she said, you know, you finish your cupcake and you think, oh, I should have done it this way or that way. Mm -hmm. You could then have them do one more and see mm -hmm. if they could be more accurate, you know. Um, the last thing I was thinking is with, you know, repeated coring brings greater statistical, you know, reliability that mm -hmm. you're going to get a more accurate picture of what's inside. So that's something you could certainly um, talk to your students about. Until your cupcake becomes geologically unstable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you could even, the data from, say if you teach five classes of this, mm -hmm. you could put the data from the first class up mm -hmm. on, you could even you could even make a huge map of like, okay, say you have five classes, you could have five sheet cakes, one for each class, mm -hmm. and they could all be located on different parts of the globe. Mm -hmm. And then you could have the data from your first class, and it would be like a puzzle where they're putting all the pieces together, and then they solve it as five different class periods. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then you could do uh, plate tectonics, Nancy says. Uh, you could uh, have, if, if, if they're decorating the top, make it, you know, put things around it so it looks like a certain civilization. You got your social studies link, you get your oh, yeah. art link. <laughs> you can, if you're covering multiple subjects anyway, you mm -hmm. can really uh, link them together that way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, I already ate half of a cupcake while I was oh, screen sharing. <laughs> so you didn't have to see me eating. Those pictures were up there for a long time. That's why they were there for a long time. <laughs> um, Did you have, have you had any um, surprises or maybe things to watch out for when doing this? Um, something that went wrong that you want to be like, don't do, you know, this hap beware this might happen. Um, I, I, would, I, I have used sprinkles, like green sprinkles on top of the brown soil to make grass, you yeah. know. And those kind of, when you core it, they get jammed down into the pink and the yellow. Oh. So it gives a false reading because the sprinkles are so tiny. Uh, they'll go in there. Um, I, I think also chocolate, you know, maybe students don't like, some of them don't like chocolate. Or um, sometimes what they'll try and do is they will try and core through the side. Yeah. Of the foil, and they it doesn't work really well. Um or, you know, just simple grasping, you know, like sometimes they squeeze too hard and <laughs> mash it. But that's that's pretty much it. Usually, you know, it's very foolproof. You just layer the, the cupcakes and then stick it in the oven. Have you tried with, I don't know, these are probably pretty standard size straws. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they, oh, I've seen straw. smaller ones that are not clear. 
So yeah, I don't know if a smaller strong. or a larger one would give you as good a result I as think this a, if you try. I think a larger one might be good. It wouldn't be push the cupcake to down that. too much. Yeah. But a smaller one would probably just not give you... Not do it. it would probably just mash it down. But the other thing you want to make sure is you have clear straws because yeah. some straws are... Uh, maybe they're white with stripes on them or something. <laughs> the, I, I'm <laughs> laughing at this comment from Michael Mayer. Could you pump in cream to do fracking? <laughs> 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 you could really go into the hot topic policy debates. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to so you make the holes with the cores and then yeah. You know. yeah, you could you could model that <laughs> with your with your sheet cake. In your your town and your river and everything, yeah. There you go. What are the implications? Um, if you do the if you do the sheet cake, it would be important to bake it in not a glass container because then you'll be able to see the layers on the side. Right. Or you know, I guess if you wanted to see the layers on the side, you could certainly do that. Yeah, you could wrap the. I guess you could try and wrap it in foil mm -hmm. and take the foil off at the end to reveal. Mm, yeah. But what you see on the outside is no guarantee of what that's will true, be that's going on in the center, so that could Some even be it, misleading and fool yeah. a little bit. Like here, the blue went up and then the red kind of went over. It really is ways. amazing that these just don't bake up in horizontal layers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm amazed that they yeah. get so sweet. And the, like my blue yeah. at the bottom gets kind of like greenish because the heat, I guess, changes mm -hmm. the color too, so you could even have a little bit of metamorphosis happening right there <laughs> at the edge. Nice. Ah, oh, cool. Uh, all right, so thank you guys for your questions and comments. Keep sending them in. Uh, I think most people are using the Q&A app, um, but I've also posted the links on the event page. Um, do you have any other, uh, maybe a favorite, any favorite moment, something really awesome that happened while doing some really big aha moment that a student had? Um, they just get so excited when they get to see the inside of the cupcake, you know. And I think it's not, it sounds strange, but it's not just students that get excited. I did this activity when I came for my interview here, and I did the activity <laughs> with all of my the faculty mm -hmm. peers. They were excited. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they got excited, too. I think there's just something about seeing the colors yeah. and... It just makes sense. It was a new activity for them. I guess. <laughs> I don't wow. think it was just the cupcakes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but yeah. Cool. All right. Um. So we're getting close to an hour. I'm going to wrap up with some announcements. Uh. We'll check for any last comments and questions from you guys. Um. Today's Wednesday, which means the next hangout is Friday. Uh, so Friday is the weekly space hangout. Uh, we, Fraser Kane and a group of astronomy journalists wrap up the news and uh, space astronomy news of the week. That's at noon Pacific on Friday. Uh, the weekly s no yes that's weekly space hangout. The virtual star party is Sunday night, either six or six thirty Pacific. Sorry, six thirty or seven Pacific. It's probably getting later now now that we're past uh, the winter solstice. Yeah, um, that is uh, where a virtual star party where we have several astronomers, amateur astronomers, who hook up their amazing telescopes to webcams and image software so that you could get live views of the sky and maybe or maybe not discover a supernova. Um, and then Monday at noon Pacific, uh, Fraser and Pamela record astronomy cast. And then that comes back around to Wednesday for learning space. And I, ha I haven't looked at the schedule to see who's next. But um, I know it's on our website. Either. Sorry. Oh, 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 I think we're talking about how to... Oh, right, right, right. We're talking with a couple of the bloggers from SciStarter about how to do uh, citizen science, bring citizen science into the classroom. So different ways of bringing different kinds of citizen science projects in the classroom, how teachers have done this already uh, and uh, could keep um, giving us suggestions on, on how to do that better. And I think they're also working to uh, attach a lot of the different citizen science projects out there uh, available through um, websites like SciStarter uh, to the standards, to the NGSS standards. So that's going to be a really useful uh, resource for teachers. So that's next week on Learning Space, next Wednesday. I'm going to go through the comments once more. Um, I think this is uh, great. Uh, Nancy, the, this, um, the shit cake idea. I think we've expanded the activity <laughs> just by having this discussion. 
So uh, yeah, if you or, uh, if you guys um, do this activity with your students or with your kids or with your interviewing team, you should take <laughs> pictures and send it to us at educate at cosmoquest.org because that would make me really happy. Or post it on social media and, and tag CosmoQuest. Uh, we post them on the blog. Oh yeah, I could put it. We could put it on the education blog. We should totally. Yeah, I will definitely be um, blogging about this activity, or maybe get, if Jess wants to write a guest post, <laughs> this will this will show up on the blog, uh, so you guys could do this as well. Which means I should take a picture of the other half of my cupcake before I eat it. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna try and do. Um, so thank you guys, um, everyone, for joining and for participating and for extending this activity with your your ideas. Uh, I would I can't wait to see uh, all of the geology cakes that come out of this <laughs> out of this activity. Um, and thank you, Jess, for for bringing this and doing this with us and making cakes for us. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.